Part four, chapter three of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter three The English Church under James the First and Charles the First. James the Fourth of Scotland became James the First of England, sixteen o three to sixteen twenty five. The destiny of English Protestantism had appeared so often to be dependent on the caprice of the ruler that both the dissenting bodies and the church of england were anxious about the probable policy of the new king it was understood that james being a calvinist in theology would exhibit little sympathy with either the roman catholics or the new church of england but no man was ever wise enough to forecast the policy of james or of any other steward with all his calvinism which he had brought down with him from scotland to london he was never known to show any favor to either the puritans or the presbyterians but pursued the policy of conciliation towards the roman catholics in england and on the continent whenever there was any way to injure the dissenting bodies he did not hesitate to do it when elizabeth was queen the whole weight of her influence was given in favor of the struggling protestants on the continent her aid to the dutch in their struggle to throw off the spanish yoke was one of the most brilliant deeds in english annals but james i the wise fool of english history courted the favor of catholic spain and was willing to make any reasonable sacrifice in that corrupt political interest whatever would crush the puritans at home and help the catholics abroad and aid in thrusting on scotland an episcopal government was his supreme pleasure the only hope of the nation lay in parliament the dissenting bodies were protected by it against the constant scheming of james i the majority of its members were puritans and were distinguished for intelligence and unconquerable devotion to the liberties of the people they knew how to watch the king with keen vision the puritans had little to hope from james i the presbyterians however had been his devoted friends but for their uniting with the established church in aiding towards his securing the english crown it is not at all likely that he would ever have sat upon the english throne they were willing to accept a moderate episcopacy and had full faith in james i but he betrayed them when on english soil he showed no regard for them and never seemed to remember his obligation to their loyalty the work with which james's name will be forever and honorably associated is the so-called authorized english version of the bible this was a revision of the bishop's bible fifteen sixty eight and was begun in sixteen o seven finished in sixteen ten and published in sixteen eleven it was the work of forty-seven scholars fifty-four were originally appointed divided into six companies of which two met at westminster two at oxford and two at cambridge the work of these separate committees was afterwards supervised and brought into regularity by six persons two from each company although it bears on its title the words appointed to be read in churches there appears no record of any royal or exclusive authorization it won its way at length though against much opposition on the strength of its own intrinsic merits it finally superseded the genevan bible which had hitherto been the most popular english version and it has ever since been the bible of the english-speaking race the purity and simplicity of its style the beauty vigor and charm of its diction and its general accuracy have endeared it beyond measure to the hearts of the people the crisis of religious oppression was reached on the reign of charles the first sixteen twenty five to forty nine his policy towards catholicism was little better than that of james the first no one knew what a day would bring forth the wife of charles was a devoted french catholic and she controlled his foreign policy his claims of extreme royal power increased with his years and his measures became oppressive to both the conscience and the political liberty of the people 
the court of high commission and the star chamber were tyrannical measures to carry out his will against the voice of the people he saw no need of a parliament he persecuted the puritans at home and in his sympathy with the catholics of france sent help to louis the thirteenth in sixteen twenty five to aid him in wrestling rochelle out of the huguenot hands when parliaments were called which would not obey him they were dissolved between sixteen twenty five and sixteen twenty nine three parliaments were convened and because disobedient to the behests of charles the first were disbanded his cruelty to the puritans his despotic measures to raise money without authority of parliament his violent efforts to enforce the liturgy of the established church on scotland and the invasion of england by the army of scotland led to an extended civil war on the battle of marston moor in 1644 where oliver cromwell commanded the left wing the loyalists were defeated in 1645 at the battle of nazeby where charles i commanded in person and cromwell commanded the left wing of the scotch army the king was overwhelmingly defeated he was tried by parliament and was executed in 1649 the successive failures of absolutism and catholic allegiances augured well for the full establishment of protestantism and religious liberty in england one of the most notable events of the reign of charles was the convening of the westminster assembly the parliament proceeding in its independent course and without regard to the wishes of charles i ordered an assembly to meet in 1643 it continued in session until 1647 it is known as the westminster assembly the presbyterians were in the majority the object of the convention was to reach some doctrinal formula which should express the presbyterian doctrines and also to aid in securing the adoption of the covenant by which both england and scotland should adopt the presbyterian polity the westminster confession the longer and shorter catechisms and the directory of worship were adopted and parliament endorsed these measures as an assembly for the statement of christian doctrine the westminster divines performed acts which have had ever since a most important bearing on the whole subsequent history of the church but as a political force the effort to introduce the presbyterian polity throughout england was a failure End of chapter 3